So in this question, uh, we are supposed to write a function that sorts a given list that is passed to the function using bubble sort uh, sorting algorithm. And the bubble sort algorithm is actually very simple. So let me just uh, explain to you what bubble sort does. So for example, you have a list of numbers A, B, C, D, E. So what bubble sort does is it starts checking two consecutive values and goes from one side to the other. And if you find that A is greater than B, you swap it. If A is less than B, you leave it like that. So um, you check A and B, let's say, or let's take some numbers so that it's easier. Let's take two, three, five, four, one. So in this case, two and three will be checked. So two is less than three, so you let it be like that. Go to the next value, three and five. Three is less than five, so you let it be like that. Go to the next value, five and four. Five is greater than four, so you swap five. So five will move here and four will move here. So this becomes five, one. And then you check five, one. Five is also greater than one, so five moves here, one moves here. So you can see the larger number will keep moving to the right. That's what it means by saying bubble sort, that the lower value or the larger value will keep bubbling to one side or bubbling up or down as you like. So after one in, one output of this, the list looks like this five has moved two places here. Then we again go again do the same thing. I can see that in the next case, this becomes because four will move and then nothing else moves. And then you can see again, there's a scope for this to move. Then one will come here. And then finally two will move. So that's how our sort works. Every time you go through the list and only change swap the values which are not in the correct order. So like this, it can do the job. So in our program, we are taking the input using this small section here. Uh, we use the input function to get a user to input some values separated by commas, for example, shown here. And then we use, since the input gives a string as an output, we use that to split the string into elements of a list, which are still characters or strings, but they are split by the comma that we are using. And that creates a list of elements. Then we check those list of elements in a for loop, say that n in that n ele nth element or the n element n in that nums list. If it is not empty, then you should append it to the empty list that we have created. And the pending value should be this output of an eval of the n, because that eval function will create, uh, will convert the string or a character into the number that it's supposed to be. And this empty thing we are checking because you could have a situation where the user enters something like this, where there is an empty character over here, which cannot be converted into a number. So we are checking if there is no empty character. There could also be a double comma by mistake, and there'll be an empty character here, which cannot be converted to a number. So to avoid these situations, we are using this if condition. So at the end of this section, we have numList variable, which has a list of numbers that the user has input. Then this is the dub bubble sort uh, function. It takes the list as an input, and we create a checklist, um, which is a empty or a zero list of the length of the input list. Why we do that, I'll come to it a bit later. And uh, we'll also come to the check a little later. Let's see the main algorithm part. So this is the main portion that I just explained to you on the right side. So in this case, you can see that we are going from range one to L, uh, length of this thing. So if we have one A, B, C, D, E. So since we are checking two at a time, so we are checking, this is one check, this is second check, this is third check, and this is fourth check, but the list length is five. So I'm taking it less, one less than that. That's why I'm starting from one. And if I start from one, I can have uh, I here and I minus one here. So that allows me to have I minus one, but I cannot have I plus one. Because then if I'm going to the length of the list last index, I cannot take I plus one. That, that's why if I take range one, two length of LST, I have to take I minus one as one of the checkpoints or the indices to be checked. If I take range zero to length of LST minus one, then I can go I checking I and I plus one. So that's, you can take any of these things. It should be the same. 
So once we do that, we have a for loop ready, which will go through all the combinations or a pair of values, consecutive pair of values, and we check it. That if the list i is less than i plus one, which means the ith value is less than the previous value. i minus one is always previous than i. So if the ith value is less, which means there is a problem in the sorting order, we swap it. And then swapping has to be done through a dummy variable called dumb here, because if you say that, uh, if I say here that a is equal to b, then a is gone. The a value is gone, and then I cannot say b equal to a after that, because the a is no more there. A has become b. So to do that, what I do is I say that in case this is to be swapped, I say a is equal to some x dummy value, then I say b is equal to a, and then I say that a is equal to sorry a is equal to x i say uh, sorry i'm doing the other way around i say the dummy value is equal to a then i say a is equal to b and then i say b is equal to x so that using this dummy value i can swap these values so this is what is happening here dummy value is given to l i minus one th variable or index uh, element then the i minus one th index is given the ith value and then the ith value is given the dummy variable so that's how the swapping happens and this will happen for one sweep of the length of the list so every time this happens this only goes through one length of the list sweeps from uh, i i minus one or uh, zero comma one checking to length n minus one to n check one time so we know that from this example on the right side that one time will not help so we have to do it a multiple times a number of times to make sure that the final list is sorted out so how many times do we have to do that so one simple guess is that even if your list is completely disordered let's say you have five four three two and one you will need five uh, sweeps of this bubble sort to sort it out because every time you can assume that the highest uh, element will be taken to the correct place three will remain here or three will um, two will have to go here and one will have to go here so basically if you if I write the orders what will happen is five four three two one become five uh, will become four three two one five and then next it will become three two one four five then it will become two one three four five and then last time it will become one two three four five so you can see that it has n minus one sorry not n if there are n elements n minus one is the uh, maximum number of uh, operations or sweeps you will need to sort it out but we have i have created a different thing which could be much faster in that case i am using a bit a bit of memory but i'm checking if the list has changed so for example in the above case if i have one two three five and four if that's the list I have, I only need to swap these once. So in the first go itself, it will swap it. And then I need not go further. So if I'll be wasting three more iterations of this, if I use the N minus one count of sweeping. So for that, I'm creating a checklist, which is I'm initializing as a zero list. So if the length of the list is five, this is going to be five zeros just to initialize it. And then I say that while check list is not equal to list you keep doing the sweeps and every time before you do the sweeps you uh, you pass or become make the checklist equal to the previous list so why am i doing this all why am i not just doing uh, this that's because if you do this in in python you are associating the um, variable address or variable name to the variable itself so if this variable changes this variable also changes so as soon as you make any changes to LST checklist also changes accordingly so then this while loop will fail the while condition will fail while it is not supposed to be equal so what we want to say is that it's not that the variable is associated by by name or by association uh, we want the elements to be copied and for that we say all the, all the elements of list have been given to checklist so that's why this is a little important to keep in mind so once you do this uh, there will be a sweep here which will change the list there will be a check here 
if there is still if there has been a change in the list because of the reordering this will not be met or this will be met it's not equal it will go in it will update the checklist do a sweep again and at that time when there is no more sweeping happening this while loop will be exited and then we just return the list that we have so checklist is just to check and stop early that's all so to print the output i have taken the num list passed it to the bubble sort um, algorithm or the function and print the output of that and you can see the output over here i've taken a random list in the question says we should take about 10 numbers so i've just taken seven here you can take 10 and run this output it will give you the correct answer and you can see that this is randomly ordered numbers and the bubble sort uh, orders them sorts them in a correct order and that's your uh, problem